Hi, Statesman Nation. Uh, I would like to introduce new women's basketball coach, Willie Scott. Willie, uh, welcome to the Statesman family. Um, congratulations on, on uh, the hiring. I um, just wanted to sit down with you for 10, 15 minutes, however long it's going to take. I just want to kind of talk about your background, talk about what your expectations are, your philosophy on basketball, etc. Um, just so everybody gets a little idea of who's running the, the program now for the women's basketball team. So, um, I guess first off, just give us a, a quick synopsis of your of your background. I know it's pretty extensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, from Chicago, okay. grew up in Chicago, west side of Chicago. Uh, moved quickly from the west side to the south side, mm-hmm. so I've kind of lived all over Chicago. Sure. Um, um, grew up at King High School, played okay. at King High School, and uh, went on to uh, Hillsdale College, NAIA school right, in right. Michigan, yep. and um, played there for two years. Mm-hmm. It was interesting because they teams wouldn't recruit me. They thought I was right. too small. Yeah. Uh, and I uh, got an offer to uh, play at Hillsdale, did really well. Mm-hmm. Ended up transferring from there. I knew I was a Division One player. Right. Uh, went on to Bradley University mm-hmm. and won a national championship there where I'm sure. also a Hall of Famer. Sure. Um, from there, I um, went and played overseas okay. uh, for 14 years. Different countries, Argentina, uh, Milan, mm-hmm. Spain. Uh, so I had a great basketball career. Yeah. Um, after that, I decided to go into a clothing business and right. make custom suits for celebrities, entertainers, right. and professional athletes. That went really well. It's yeah, fun. yeah, that's definitely the, the very interesting time. We can come back to that, or if you want to talk about it right now, but that you, yeah, a basketball player turns into a, a tailor. So yeah. <laughs> talk, talk about that. I mean, I, that's just so interesting to me. I know that you've got you had some experience in Argentina. You got uh, trained, etc. But how did, I mean, obviously you love clothes. <laughs> yeah, I do. I've always been a clothes horse ever since I was little. Right. You know, I would piece it together. You know, I would get my father's shoes and mm-hmm. my brother's belt and my shirt and just make right. it work. Sure, uh, sure. So, you know, just kind of fell in love with the fashion right. industry. Um, but then, you know, I've always had a passion for basketball, mm-hmm. even as a young kid. Sure. Uh, played um, at the Martin Luther King Boys Club, okay. uh, Biddy Basketball, myself. Uh, Isaiah Thomas, uh, Craig Robinson, who's a uh, brother-in-law of Obama. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, we all played together and uh, some other friends of mine as well. Okay. Hence the connection with Isaiah. I was trying to figure out how he was one yeah, of your references. Yeah, so we, that's very we cool. grew up together and uh, cool. we used to compete uh, awesome. at a high level at a young age. Sure. Um, and uh, he went on to high school and we went to do two different high schools, right. obviously. And um, that's kind of where we okay. departed and mm-hmm. did our own thing. Right. Um, as far as the coaching part, it's very, my, my deal is very non-traditional. Right. Uh, and that's probably why I struggled so much to, to land a, a great coaching job. Um, you know, during my company, uh, my mom got sick and I got a call and I had to move to Mississippi and take care of her. Okay. Um, and, and from there, I had to shut my company down. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, end up meeting the head coach at uh, Jackson State. Uh, Sylvester Anderson, who was very ins- inspirational to my uh, coaching career. Right. Uh, he looked me in my face and told me after one year that I was a head coach. Okay. Uh, and I didn't believe him. Right. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I knew I had something. Right. Um, and, and so I, I interviewed for Malcolm X job in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Right. My mom had got a little better. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I left Mississippi and coached at Malcolm X. and sure. Struggling program. Uh, mm-hmm. But ended up winning 15 games the first year, and at that point I just fell in love with coaching. Right. Um, and to the point where I turned down jobs the second year, went back to Malcolm X, sure. and coached again. I, I, I was like a, uh, a fanatic, like I felt like I didn't get enough. Right. Right. And so I went back and and coached that second year at Malcolm X and okay. won 19 games mm-hmm. and almost went to the nationals. Right. Um, and, and from there, I had an opportunity. I was the finalist for the Chicago State job, myself okay. and a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And, and then Bradley offered me the job as an assistant coach. Right. Uh, and at, at that point, I, I struggled with that decision because my mentor, who was uh, Tavester Anderson at Jackson State, I would call him and ask him, what should I do? Sure. And he told me, he said, you, you never turn down a head coaching job. Right, right. And I did. Yes. And I probably made a mistake. And, and from there, it kind of went downhill. Mm-hmm. Uh, they fired the head coach at uh, Bradley, and uh, Bradley felt like I wasn't uh, ready to be the head coach, which sure. I felt like I was totally ready. Right, uh, right. And, and uh, 
uh, they brought in a new coach, which mm-hmm. was uncomfortable for me. Right. Uh, so I decided to resign, go back and start it over. Yeah. Uh, let me get back to being the head coach because that's what I enjoyed sure. the most. Sure. Uh, felt like uh, I've always been a leader mm-hmm. and, and understood the game and kind of coached the game as a player from the floor. Right. So that's probably why I was so good at coaching. Sure. Um, so I went to uh, Diet High School, struggling high school in Chicago, mm-hmm. which unfortunately they were phasing out. There were schools in that area who that was closing. Okay. So sure. after one year at Diet, they had closed the school. Okay. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. uh, but I went in and won nineteen games. Right. and came in second place. So again, I'm like, I have to, I have to keep doing this sure, thing, and sure. I have to Got convince to... somebody to, to let right. me do it at a higher level. Right. And uh, it was a struggle. Mm-hmm. It was a struggle. Uh, then I took uh, the semi-pro team, Chicago Steam, mm-hmm. uh, Ron Hicks, and uh, did really well there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that that was a tough job for me because those guys we didn't pay them enough for them to do it full time, right. so they couldn't come to practice sometimes. Sure. And, Sure. Uh, teams fall folding. Uh, right. Just didn't have the finances yep. to keep uh, it going. So I uh, figured I needed to get back to the college level. Right. So I took the job at AIB as an assistant. Sure. Struggling program. Yep. Um, and, and helped turn that program around sure. immediately. Right. Yeah, um, definitely. And so got some recognition mm-hmm. in that. Uh, got some calls and some, some interviews, and it went well. Sure. Uh, but I had learned from not take an opportunity to be a head coach when I when I passed up on the final interview at Chicago State. Right. I um I wasn't gonna make that mistake again. Sure. sure. And so when Greg uh, called me back and offered me the job before he can get it out of his mouth <laughs> I was in. Yeah. Uh, and had some other opportunities. Right. Uh, but you know I I just felt like it was my time. Sure. And uh, this was a great place uh, to start coaching women and, and right. being a head coach at a four-year right. school and mm-hmm. building a program. I don't think it's another program in the country like William Penn because I've heard about William Penn forever. Yeah, Everywhere sure. you go, people heard about William Penn. And right. when I ask somebody, they're like, oh, William Penn? So um, I, I think the head coach, uh, John, has done a phenomenal job of building that program with right. the men's team. Sure. And, and he laughed at me because... He tells me how good I am, but I'm telling him how good <laughs> yeah, he is. Right. And, and I want to be like him. Yeah, just building each other's <laughs> egos up. <right? laughs> yeah, we're networking each other. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I have a lot of respect for him. Mm-hmm. And, and he, honestly, he's the one that kind of helped me get here. Yeah. Um, suggested that I, I consider it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and also told me that I would be good at it. Yeah. Uh, and, and I respect him for that. Yeah. You know, so uh, when you're working hard and you're trying to accomplish something and you're trying to get people to see what you're doing, and mm-hmm. they just don't see it. Right. Um, and then you finally get somebody who say, "Wow, I see it." Sure. You know, that's an eye opener for me. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm ecstatic right now. I'm, yeah. I'm really excited about uh, being here and, and yeah. starting over and starting a new um, chapter in my life. Sure. Um, sure. I uh, just met with the women's team, and mm-hmm. it was it was fun. Yeah. You know, I, when I first walked in, I know they were. A little quiet and concerned, right. and yeah, sure. um, kind of broke the ice, and right. uh, end up uh, having a really good time. But also okay. let them know that you know I'm used to winning, yeah. And so this is not going to be easy, right? You know, and um, I, I think that it went well, sure. And so um, I'm here, yeah, and excited and appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, definitely. I know um, when we were a few weeks back, I was talking with Coach Henry when the season was still going on, and I just said, you know, how's how's AIB so good? He goes, it's that assistant coach. He goes, you didn't even lie. He said, it's that assistant coach. He goes, we played up there the first time. He said it was a couple minutes in, and something had happened, and, and you more or less told this player, no, you will not be talking back. We're going to, this is how we're going to run it. And he goes right there, and he knew that we were going to lose. <laughs> he said, that coach, he's amazing. We were, we were going to lose, and we did lose that night. Um, but, you know, obviously things, things worked out how they did. Um, but yeah, he spoke extremely highly of you. So when I knew that they were bringing you in, I was really excited. I was like, okay. "Wow, this guy's got some crazy credentials." So um, one other thing, you didn't you didn't talk about it, but I just thought it was really interesting. Uh, Trailblazers Portland mm-hmm. brought you in for a little bit to uh, to work with one of their players. Um, talk about that experience. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, I was contacted by uh, the assistant uh, GM mm-hmm. Tom Penn. Um, who actually knew me from Bradley. He's from Peoria, okay, so sure. he kind of watched my basketball career sure. at Bradley. 
and uh, he had did really well for himself right. and uh, just called me one day. It was interesting because of the timing. Mm -hmm. I was in Mississippi taking care of my mom. Sure. Travis Outlaw lived in Sparksville, Mississippi, okay. which was 45 minutes away from where oh, I was at. Okay. And I was unemployed. Yeah. So he called me and said, hey, I heard you was in Mississippi. I have a player that uh, I want you to work him out sure. all summer. Sure. He has a big contract coming up, and we want to make sure that he's better when he comes back and right. he's in great shape. And uh, So they flew me into Portland, interviewed me, and I worked him out right on site, and mm -hmm. they kind of fell in love with what I did. Sure. And it's funny, I, I didn't have a plan. Right. You know, uh, I, I have to give God, be remiss not to give God the glory for my talent, uh, the gift that he has given me, right. because it's not something that... Um, um, I can explain. Yeah. It just happens. Yeah, sure. And so I didn't get on the plane, have a notepad, what I'm going to do when I work them out. I just walked in there and worked them out. Sure. And uh, they were like, wow, you know, you do this all the time? I was like, no, I never did. <laughs> never done it. Yeah, never done it. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, and Travis was very uh, respectful and he worked hard. And, mm -hmm. and I got a note from them that when he came back to camp that he was in the best shape of his career right. and had an outstanding season. Yeah. And so I, I was pleased with yeah, that. Definitely. Unfortunately, the general manager and Tom end up uh, getting fired. Um, I don't like to use the word fired. They, <laughs> they made a change. <laughs> right. Um, they went a different direction. Or I probably would have been with Portland. Sure. Um, and, and so uh, it, it was a great experience. Right. I, I would work him out Monday through Thursday. I would drive up there work them out Monday through Thursday, and then I had Friday, yeah. Saturday, and Sunday off. Sure. And uh, then drive back up and stay the week. And, uh, it, it, you know, people that work for the NBA, it's an amazing uh, job. Yeah. You know, just to be a part of an yeah. organization that powerful. Yeah. Uh, with so many resources. Right. And, um, you know, they had me, I had a lot of gear, and mm -hmm. it was looking good. Yeah, and right. Good, <laughs> nice check. So. There you go. Um, I, I I really enjoyed that part yeah. of this this uh, journey, sure. this coaching journey. Yeah, it's definitely been a journey. We were talking Mississippi to Chicago, out to Portland, and you've been all over the place. And then you know your whole playing career, so uh, just crazy. But um, going back to just talking about okay, what you're going to do here? What are you going to do here at William Penn? You said you got all of this these credentials with men's basketball. Um, is basketball basketball? How was the transition going to be to coaching the women? Um, actually, I have a little jump start. Um, a few years ago in Chicago, I'm not sure you, if you're familiar with the Pro-Am League. Okay. It's a league that once you finish college, uh, you have these all these players who either play in the WNBA or right. go overseas or don't go anywhere but right. still can play. Sure. That's a pro-am league. They yep. put the league together. Mm -hmm. So they had a national league in uh, 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 Las Vegas. Okay. And so uh, one of my friends sponsored the team and asked me to coach it. Okay. And it was women. Right. And yep. so it's funny that you say coaching is coaching. I really believe that because – when I can remember clearly when he asked me to do it, yeah. I never thought about I have to coach women. Right. Okay. I just thought about I'm a coach a team. Sure. And so that was my approach. There you go. And um, we end up winning the championship there, mm -hmm. and I was like the coach of the tournament or right. coach right. of the year. Yeah. Um, but that's my same approach now. Sure. And, and I, let me back up a little bit. I believe that God was calling me to coach women at that point. Right. Because I, I realized I was pretty good at it, right. and I, I got along with the women, and I know sure. women are different from guys, sure. and yeah. uh, you know they play below the rim, and uh, they're probably not as athletic and quick and stronger, but uh, they're smarter, and uh, <laughs> yeah. they're more yeah, fundamentally yeah. sound, right. and um, a lot of them shoot better. Yeah. Uh, if you, I watched uh, UConn play, and the girl on Utah. UConn's team is one of the best shooters in the country. Oh, yeah. Shoot it just like a guy, or sure. better than a guy. Sure. So I, I never really looked at it, and I'm not going to approach it like I'm just coaching the women's sure. team. I'm coming to uh, William Penn to coach the women's team, but my philosophy is going to be the same. Sure. I'm going to work them out the same. Sure. Um, obviously, there's going to be some difference. Right. But um, And, and I'm going to have to make some adjustments. Right. You know, but uh, I have a daughter that's 26 years old, and I've raised her since she was a kid. Sure. So I know what the spoiling and 
certain times you don't want to do right. what you want. You know, I right. get all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, pouting and just, uh, okay, but guys do that. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> guys don't want to die for the loose ball right, either. Right. You know? <laughs> so, um, but to answer your question, um, my, my goal is to come in and change the culture. Okay. Um, it's no reason why William Penn's women basketball should should not be like the men's basketball or the other sports that go to the nationals Mm -hmm. and have national attention. Right. Uh, So my goal is to do three things. One, to make sure that these kids have a great experience in college at William Penn. Okay. Second, make sure that they graduate and graduate on time. Sure. And then third is to win. Yeah. Get to the nationals. Sure. Uh, So... I know I have my work cut out, but uh, I love a challenge, and that's why I took all the jobs that I took because sure. as a player, they always told me I was too small, wasn't good enough, mm-hmm. and always uh, not just succeeded, but super succeeded. Yeah. And when they when I started my company, how are you going to sell suits for that amount and right. sold them to everybody? Right. Uh, and now as a coach, how are you going to come in and you never coach women and you win? Yeah. How are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to do it the same way I've done everything else. Right. I'm going to be Willie Scott, and uh, I, I'm going to use the gift that God, the, the gift that God has given me sure. to teach, mentor, um, and, 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 and coach um, this team sure. and, and, and do well. Sure. Man, I'm, I'm excited about it. Definitely. Um, talk about your philosophy on the court. Um, are we talking up and down? Are we talking very disciplined, lots of passes? Hoosier, you got to be able to pass it five times before you shoot type thing, or are you going to work with whatever is given to you on any given season? Or do you have a kind of a plan on this is what we'd like to implement every year? I think you have to look at it two different ways. I just talked to them and they asked me that question, which I thought was a good question. Yeah, great question. Um, I have my own philosophy that I've developed over time, Mm -hmm. uh, over a period of time. Uh, I like pushing the ball because I pushed it. Right. but you have to have a great point guard to push it. Sure. You know, so um, I, I'm, I'm big on guards. Sure. Uh, I don't believe the guards should make a lot of turnovers. They should be smart and mm-hmm. make right decisions, get the ball to the shooters when they're supposed to, right. uh, incorporate the big on the block and make sure everybody's happy. Right. So I told them today, if you want to push it, then are, is it a point guard in here that can push it? Because right. if it's not, then you're going to make me change my philosophy. Sure. So it, it, it kind of go both ways. Right. If I have the personnel mm-hmm. to fit with my philosophy, I won't change it. Right. But if, if it's not, then I have to make some adjustments. Sure. But my, my primary philosophy is to push the ball. Sure try to get a quick shot, a good quick shot. Sure. And if that doesn't happen, I have 75 plays. There you go. Not, and <laughs> the, the girl said, so are we going to run? Are we going to have a book? Are we going to know 75? I said, no, but, you know, maybe 10 uh, that we're going to be really good at. Right. Um, but if I'm running a play and I set up a shooter to come off a stagger screen, but you can't make the shot, then I can't. we can't run that play. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Or a point right. guard that can't get it to him. Mm-hmm. Or we can't get the ball on the block because we can't make a post pass. Sure. Um, so, uh, very organized. Um, we're going to execute, okay. but we're going to push the ball. Sure. And I'm huge on defense. Sure. Uh, I'm a defense fanatic. Yeah. Um, when I played, I'd pick you up 94 feet and I would cause some props for you. And, and so, I want my team to be the same way. So we're talking press? Absolutely. There you go. We're going to press. We're going to pressure the ball. You know, uh, and, and this is not just women, uh, a lot of players can't dribble with their left. Mm-hmm. Maybe I shouldn't say this. On the <laughs> and, and so the reason I win a lot of games because I find what the opponent team can't do. Sure. So if we play a team and they're really good, but they guard can't dribble with his left, right. he's going to have a long night. Sure. Because I'm going to get somebody on my team to keep him on the left side sure. the entire night. Sure. Uh, so just kind of picking out the weaknesses. Sure. And then also not allowing the deep, not allowing the, the, the opponent team to execute whatever they want to execute. Mm-hmm. So we would change defenses a lot. Sure. Um, I, I know, and I have to say this, when we play William Penn, um, I'm looking at film and I'm looking at the history of them and, and I said, Coach, and what he asked me, he said, I'd never beat William Penn. Right. 
And I said, well, you never beat anybody. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how we gonna, <laughs> how you gonna, how we gonna beat William Penn? And he said, you know, that's why I brought you here. Right. You know, so uh, went home and watch film and watch film and watch film and I was like I'm gonna run a triangle too and um, coach couldn't figure out what we were doing for a long time right and and we ended up beating him yeah. because yeah, you're when he down. finally figured it out I said coach switch it come out get something do something else because he, he done caught on to that yeah. and so we kept switching defenses so sure. he never figured out what we were doing sure uh, that's the kind of coach I am. Yeah, you know, yeah. keep them on their toes. Yep, yeah, I want to change um, the the way to. Uh, not, I'm not really coaching against the other coach, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm not gonna just let you run whatever you want to run. Sure. You don't have to beat me a different way. Sure. Um, so uh, that's basically my philosophy. Sure, definitely. Um, family life. Uh, still have a son that's mm -hmm. in elementary, so you'll be coming here to to Oskaloosa. So. Um, it's very, very exciting. We have a lot of, of uh, youth within our athletics department, so he should have a lot of fun with uh, all of our kids there. Um, let's talk about that, incorporating family and life within your, your job, within your career. Yeah. Uh, interesting road. Um, my son is six years old mm -hmm. and um, um, divorced. I'm a single parent. Sure. Um, my ex-wife and I decided uh, when we felt it wasn't a good match for both of us that um, we depart mm -hmm. uh, and be cordial about it. Sure. Um, and we're not the first family that ever did that, mm -hmm. you know, um, especially in this day and age. Yeah. So I took my son and um, I've, I've raised him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been with me. It's been a struggle sometimes. Sure. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's the most important part of my life sure. is my son. And uh, outside of God, right? Uh, so uh, I just do the best job that I can, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I don't make excuses. Yeah. You know, if, if I can be one of the best point guards out there and and do all the things that I I accomplished and be the best designer, then why not be the best father? There you go. You know, so I I, um, I take that very serious. Sure. Uh, being a parent. Sure. Uh, and, and I don't make excuses for it. So. We, we have a great life. Sure. I mean, you know, when you look at a kid, um, it's never his fault. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I never want him to feel like that. Sure. You know, so, um, you know, he, he loves basketball. He loves sports. Mm -hmm. He golf. Uh, he's going to play baseball this year. And, uh, he does great in school. Great. But then I'll still tear his little butt up to you when, he, <laughs> when it's time to do that as well. Right, right. Right. Don't, don't send me to DSFS. But... Um, <laughs> I, I just, I, I love being a parent, right. you know, I have a 26-year-old daughter, and yeah. uh, she's my best friend, yeah. you know, so um, I, my daughter said, Dad, you're the only one that can mess that up, you have a 26-year-old daughter and a 6-year-old <laughs> son, and you 54, <laughs> so, I mean, but that's been the story of my life, it's right. nothing traditional, nothing traditional, <laughs> so, that, that is and I'm writing a book team. about that, I agree, you should, I'll read it, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I just, you know, I, I know I've made some mistakes, and um, we all made mistakes, you know. But I, you know, I, I don't dwell on that, you know. When I look at my life and I think about the good and the bad, the the good outweigh the bad by far. Sure. You know, so I roll with that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I keep God first, and I trust Him with everything that I do, and even when it's hard to trust Him, yeah. you know, I still trust Him. Yeah. And uh, I try to raise my son in the church and, and make sure that he does the right thing. And, sure teach him to um, open the door for a lady now. Yeah, there you go. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So when we're together and the lady like walking and she he run up there and open the door, it's just kind of, you know, she, yeah. she don't get it. Like, <laughs> he's, he's only six. I was like, right. well, you got to teach him now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but then we go to the basketball court and he dribbles with his right and left hand. There you go. I got to teach him left hand. That's right. So, <laughs> you know, I, I have fun with him and we're going to come here and, and, you know, you guys have been like really uh, great. Yeah. And 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 I I, um, I I think you guys will like him a lot. He's a lot of fun. He's a gym rat. Yeah. Um, he hangs out with the team like go. he did with that uh, AIB, and you know they love him. Yeah. The girls and the guys team love him. Yeah. So I know the girls are gonna love him, and um, you know I, I'm just really excited about the transition. Yeah. You know, can't wait to get here and bring him here and get him in school and uh, just have a lot of fun and put in the work. Sure. Kindergarten right now. 
kindergarten right now. Okay. Interesting time because he has two more months of school. Sure. I already have some friends there. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're going to have to pull him out and transfer him. Yeah. And He'll make he's, tons of friends. Here. Yeah, he's friendly. The first day, he's going to come home and say, I have a new friend. So, yeah. you know, he's not going to be bothered by the transition yeah. period. Yeah. Um, you know, as long as uh, he has friends to play with and a basketball, he's there good. Go. There you and, go. And chicken McNuggets. There you go. I love chicken McNuggets. <laughs> well, my daughter's five, so she'll love cool. hanging out with him. Yeah, so. that's good. Well, Willie, um, anything else that you want to add as far as to tell any recruits, any fans, any parents about, about yourself? I think we've covered the, the whole breadth of all of it. So um, it's going to be fun having you on the staff. I'm looking forward to uh, to watching, watching you and... Uh, getting the job done so um you know we'll definitely continue to converse and if any time you said there's uh anything that comes up that you want to talk about we'll pop in front of the camera again and, and do it so no but, uh, i appreciate it I, w I would just like to say first and foremost i'd like to thank the president um and the uh, athletic department and uh, the ad greg and and those guys um john mm -hmm. um for just uh, allowing me the opportunity sure. to um, um, be in charge of the the women's basketball program, uh, I really appreciate that. And um, for any parent and, and anybody that we recruit, um, I want you guys to know that uh, it's it's okay to put your kid um, with me uh, in 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 my hands, and I'm gonna treat those girls just like I treat my own daughter sure. um, with respect uh, mentor them and my door is always open for them sure. uh, but I'm also going to uh, challenge them as well right. uh, on and off the court uh, and I think it's going to be a great experience and I think William Penn is the perfect place to uh, send your daughter uh, if she wants to have a great experience uh, in basketball, mm -hmm. in life uh, and also make sure that she has a great education all right. Well, thanks, Willie, so much, and uh, congratulations on the new job. We're really excited to have you here, and welcome to the family. Thank you. I appreciate okay. it. Thanks so much. Thanks.